What's up everyone, Joshua with Ohio Fish Rescue. Today we're here to talk about a couple exciting topics and one of those are in the tank right behind me. So you all remember this thousand gallon aquarium. We picked it up from uh, a buddy here in Cleveland, but these ultimately came from the Columbus Zoo. And this is a thousand gallon aquarium. It is eight by four by four. And we use this as our bass tank. There's a couple different species of bass. We have Panama right here. There's two of those. We have Blue Azul, which is right there. We have a mono, which look at that hump on his head, it's getting ridiculous. We have gold kelberry back here. There's another mono and another gold kelberry that's hiding back in the rocks. And there's also a black dragon uh, cactus pleco in there. But this tank looks awesome and all as a bass tank, but I want to try and add something in there to give it a little bit more spice. And I think we figured it out. If you look over here, Window's a bit dirty down there, but that's the other Black Dragon Cactus Pleco. So we've got them one in each tank, but uh, we we're, we got to do some maintenance on here for sure. But that's going to be happening tomorrow. we got a bunch of volunteers coming over to help with maintenance and all the tanks. So that should be getting done. But let's go take a look at what I think that we got that should go in here. All right, I'll give you guys some looks at the fish as we go around. My God, look at that Paraiba. He is getting just massive. Every time I see him, I'm just impressed. Super impressed, beautiful rays. All right, we're gonna keep working our, our way around, guys. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna come over to the quarantine rack. So you know, Amazon River, the river basin, it's gotta be something from that area, but these were recent pickups. They still gotta go through quarantine, of course, but I think these guys right here, would look absolutely awesome in with the, those bass. They, they both come from uh, the Amazon River Basin, but this is a species of geophagus. These guys are absolutely massive. There goes my hand, there, there goes them. And they're at the back of the tank, so they're even just a tad bit bigger. But I think these guys would look awesome, give a little bit more color and pizzazz into that bass tank and may, maybe some more activity, it might help curb aggression, who knows, but look at that coloring on them. You've got red and blues and greens and yellow. Just a pretty, pretty fish, but like I said, they got a little beat up. They're going through quarantine. You can see their tet tail's a bit chewed up there. So we are working on, we have medication in the water. We're working on quarantining these guys and healing them back up to health. Once we are satisfied with, uh, the way they look, then we can go and put them into the bass tank. Hey, check this out. So something you don't normally see, uh, he kind of got away already. Where did he go? Oh man, I got so excited. I seen a familiar face out that they always hide. It doesn't look like they're in here. And I finally seen them out and I scared them with the camera. We're gonna see if he pops out for just another second here. But I saw clown loaches. There are clown loaches in this tank that we put in here. You can see that Leparanus hides up in there. Sorry about the glare of the lights. Can't really do nothing about that. There he goes, look at him. There's clown loaches in here. <laughs> so we actually put a whole colony in here and they're just really, really great hiders. There's so many places to hide in these corals. On the back sides, they'll tuck themselves up underneath the corals and you won't see them. They normally like coming out at nighttime. But I thought you guys would enjoy that. Look at that little golden Chinese algae eater. Such a cute little guy. But I was walking by the tank, I seen him, I'm like, oh, I gotta get this on video. So I hope you guys like that little, little bit. But for anyone who is watching this video, we have a bunch of fish that are available to Rahom. We've got this awesome probably 12 inch pleco here we've got this jaguar and adonis cat uh what do we have down here uh we've got pond goldfish we've got a little ballast shark we have iridescent shark we have a big red tail if anyone has a pond adequate enough for them same thing for the iridescent 
and we've got Oscars. So I was just bragging about how we had no room and now we're filled back up with fish, but you know what? That's what we do here at Ohio Fish Rescue. We save fish, we uh, quarantine them, we rehome them, and a majority of uh, what comes in, I'd say probably about 95% of what comes in goes back out. So even down here, I got a few ideas on some videos that I can do to e educate our followers before we find these guys a, a new home, which I've actually already have. We were home some uh, red bellies about this size, I want to say about six month months ago to uh, a friend of a friend. He's a, a red be uh, piranha enthusiast, I'm sorry, not a red belly enthusiast. And he loves his piranhas. They have awesome setups. So we're actually going to send these guys to live with the rest of the colony. But first, I want to make sure that they are healthy. And second, I want to do some videos on these guys so I can help educate everyone that watches our videos. Okay, so we're checking back in. The window's been cleaned. And now this would be where them geophagus would eventually go. I think we can all agree. There goes one of the kelp berries out. This is one of the the not nice one. Oh, look at that! See, well, I'm telling you, needs some uh, aggression being curved in here. That's why they are hiding. Big bass tend to fight, so uh, I think putting them geophagus in here would do wonders. But there's only one way to find out. So I think that's what we're going to do here. Put them in here, and uh, hopefully it'll break up some of this aggression. But let's go check in on someone else real quick. All right, so we're up here looking at Little Lone Star. This is our Australian lungfish. Of course, it was donated by Lone Star Rare Exotic Fish Co. He is getting pretty big. He's definitely putting on some weight. His uh, front fins, as you can see right there, they are starting to, to develop. They're actually fully developed. Now his back legs are starting to de develop. So he's getting a lot more control of his body, which I told you I was worried about. But I feed him extra every night, so every day we have to come out here and take out the bits of food that's uneating because they get uh, tufts of fungus on them. But you know what? You got to keep food in the tank because he is a baby and he has to eat multiple times a day. So you want he doesn't have no fat storage on him because he's virtually nothing. I'd say he, he's about as big around as my pinky finger right now. So he definitely put on a bunch of weight since we've had him. So I have seen growth on him, but we need him to put on just a little bit more weight, get a little bit more control of his body. And uh, then only then would he be able to bump up into a new tank. All right, I'm gonna stick a little stick down in here and see if I can get him to move for you guys. And you guys can see how much better he's able to move. See, he can actually swim now. Look at that. Cute little guy, that's for sure. All right, so there goes my pinky right next to the lungfish. So, did, didn't kick you. He's not quite as big as my first finger, but he's getting there. He's definitely making some progress. So that's as much as I can ask for. Beautiful lungfish. Nonetheless, I love in the fact that we get to grow them out and have them here for God as long, long as I'm alive probably but again thanks to Lone Star Rare Exotic Fish Co. This guy is awesome and we named him Lone Star. He's just a little cutie. So not to be mistaken this is an Australian lungfish right here. We have a couple different types of lungfish in here. This is a regular African lungfish, and then this is a West African. Now th these guys are a lot more aggressive, so uh, we might not be able to put these guys in together. I have been able to do it in the past. <clears throat> I've come to find out that actually South American lungfish are some of the most aggressive, which you know, there's kind of conflicting stories on that. I'm only going based off of my personal opinion and my experiences with the fish that I've kept. And most of the time, all the uh, South American lungfish, they try and take chunks out of the fish. These uh, African lungfish here, they seem to play nice. There have been a few that I've gotten in and they were a little bit mean and temperamental, 
but look at his side arms. That's just a beautiful fish. So we had to put them in here with uh, select fish and they have to not go after the side arms. If you look at that lungfish there, he got his side arms bitten off. That's why they're much shorter, but they will grow back given enough time. So you can see they're starting to grow back out and his are actually full grown. See how majestic that looks? Just a very, very attractive fish. Most people call them ugly. I personally lo love them. I think they are awesome. All right, guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick update on, you know, my thoughts with that bass tank, a little update on Lone Star. While we're walking by it, this is the 450 gallon. We are just about ready to fill it. As you can see, my dad's been working on, on this brace, and we're gonna build a canopy for it. Once that's done, that tank is ready to be filled. The filters are pre-seated on uh, the quarantine tanks, so that tank should be ready to go as soon as we uh, build that canopy, which will probably be next week sometime. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more crazy adventures with the Ohio Fish Rescue, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.